Years in the future, but not many. A wayward vagabond records a stuttering step in the sun-bleached dust. Suburb Beta Walkthrough, version 1.0, April 13th, 2009, by Tentacle Therapist. Table of Contents 1. Caveats and Condolences 2. Walkthrough, Incomplete Caveats and Condolences I'd be inclined to dispense with the trite even under less pressing circumstances. Needless to say, I'll forgo the inscrutable ASCII banner which typically heralds the striking freefall of these documents. I'll also resist the urge to brandish any copyright marks or the particular neuroses that concerns itself with the theft of the utterly mundane. I'll allow other deranged prospectors to stake claims on their worthless plots as the woods burn around them. My introduction will be sparse. There will be no majestic prose blustering into the sails of a galleon as we embark on this voyage together, nor will there be any ham-fisted prose whipping its limbs under a bedsheet like a retarded ghost, for that matter. I won't set the stage or dim the lights. The mood you will see will be set soon enough. Since you are reading this, chances are you have installed this game on your computer already. If this is true, like many others, you have just participated in bringing about the end of the world. But don't beat yourself up about it. There was never anything you could have done to prevent it. The end is happening right now, as I type as you read. I have come to understand that we were always doomed through our collective ignorance, and now further doomed by those few who know and struggle to flee. If you're lucky, you'll be among the smaller subset of the latter who are successful. What I mean is while that game you installed is just one more grinding slab of rock sealing our planet's crypt, it is also your only hope to live. I'm presently faced with the same conundrum as you, and though I speak with more experience, my own outcome is far from assured. I will play the game, as much of it as there is to play, and record my findings here. If you want to live, you will do as I instruct. My condolences. TT. The kernel divides, the two halves go their separate ways, leaving behind the sprite portion. What is left of the sprite undergoes a mysterious transformation. For a moment you thought you heard someone say BOY, as if whispered in the periphery of your awareness. It was probably just your imagination, though. To walk around, use the mouse, arrow keys, or wasset keys. Click on various objects to open command menus for them. Outstanding flash programming by Alexis Gankro Ben Gessner. This large platform. Good grief, what is it, boy? 
The Alchemator created the apple, or the tree that sprouted it rather, right on time to save you from destruction. You're not sure if you can say the same for the rest of your neighbourhood though. You wonder what happened to your dad? Boy, open this door and walk through it. Use this to reseal that opening there. If only putting the lid back on the crook strudel would undo all that it has done. Alas, the Pandora's tube has been opened. Move this absurd edifice and exit your house, boy. This thing weighs a ton. You'd be honestly be surprised if the game cursor could lift it, or at least not without a significant expense of grist. Of all the places for Rose to drop the infernal thing, more than ever you feel... Uh, what's the word you're looking for? This way, through the doors like you've seen a cowboy saloon. Open this door now! Go back into the luncheon parlor. Sample parlor and cook dessert. Back, ye miserable wench! Stay thy choking airborne particles of temptation! You there, boy. Exit, boy. Admire this wall-mounted gadget. Through some mysterious force, your house still seems to be powered, even though the wires are severed. Quite bizarre. Back in the house with you. Boy, quit all this scurrying around. For the last time, this boy's name is John. Fine. John, return to the quarters. You go back up to your bedroom, tiptoeing around this weird petroleum-based sludge. Now, John, respond to your friend unit. John, are you there? Hey, yeah, I'm here. And not dead, I think. I know. I've been watching you scramble through the house like a lunatic. You should have answered me sooner. Oh man, sorry. I was looking for my dad and I can't find him anywhere. Have you seen him? No. I'm sure he'll turn up. We have more important things to address right now. Yeah, like, where am I? I don't know that either, but I've determined your neighborhood was destroyed by the meteor. Wherever you were transported, it saved you from the impact. I've been reading reports in the news. Over the last few days, there have been many smaller meteor collisions with people's homes around the world, and they seem to be getting bigger. Yours was the biggest they've identified so far. Wow, okay. So then I guess, if this is all the game's doing, then the point is for us to save the world? Perhaps. Then we better get moving and figure this game out. Yes, but wait. We should retrieve your PDA. Yet again. It will help to keep tabs on each other while you investigate. I think I can get you closer to it, if I can replenish our grist supply somewhat. There may be a way to recycle some that we already use. Okay. I'll meet you on the balcony. Wait. Rose, one thing. What? You never even wished me a happy birthday. Um, hello? I was working on something to send you, but I was running late with it. I didn't want you to think I believed a meager well wishes alone would suffice for the occasion. That said, happy birthday, John. <laughs> oh jeez, that is silly. Anyway, thanks.
First, take the fabric item on the floor there. The Tau? Why? Oh well, you're the boss. You capture log the Tau. What now? Do as the purple text says. To the balcony. John makes his way to the balcony per your awkwardly worded request. Wait, take that, the blue wobbly thing. You whimsically decide to capture log the totem which was used to create the apple tree earlier. John, recycle the grist as was dictated by your cohort. John cannot do anything with the grist as of the moment. That is up to the Esberb player. Yes, that will suffice. Rose deletes the perfectly generic <laughs> objects. Six units of build grist are restored to your grist cache. Rose expends the grist to drag a new plank from the balcony in the direction of the PDA. John, run across precarious platforms swiftly. John isn't sure about that. It's a long way down. Boy, I said make haste on the narrow catwalk. John is very nervous about the idea and the strident tone of your commands is starting to make him a little upset. Fine. Post speed as your level of comfort dictates. You cautiously walk within the range of the PDA. Rose then retrieves it. Now take it. You grab the PDA, launching one of the Harlequin figures into the night. You can kiss that one goodbye. Forward arrow, forward arrow. Just one arrow command will suffice. Thanks. It looks like you're not the only one trying to locate your father after the disaster. John, are you okay? You seem a bit tentative. I'm fine, I guess. Since I got here, I feel compelled to do all these weird things I don't really want to do. By some kind of voice that I can't really even hear, I don't know, it's hard to explain. Perhaps the early symptoms of an anxiety disorder, like post-traumatic stress. Yeah, maybe, who knows. Well, if you pull yourself together, there are a few more things we should try. Like prototyping the kernel sprite again, if possible. We should hurry. My laptop battery won't last forever. Okay, I will go back inside. No, no, don't do that. Hop off this ledge onto that car. What? No, no, that sounds incredibly dangerous. Now you're just being a pest. Which turnip truck did you tumble out of anyway? Who are you? Years in the future, but not many, an unsealed tunnel welcomes hot desert air into its stagnant depths.